Right, welcome back to today's video on the Average Golfers channel where I'm going to tell you about the weirdest what's in the bag I've ever put together. And this is real. This is not. This is what I played golf with last week in a competition and played the best golf I've played all year. This is one weird what's in the bag. Right, before I get to the clubs in question, I need to tell you a little bit of a story about how they came about. And uh, about a week or so, we filmed the video that hopefully you watch, which was me playing with a set of blades effectively, the TaylorMade P7 MBs. And they started to really ask questions of what I had in the bag to start with. But my old game was struggling a little bit. Putter, wedges, driver, nothing was really going well. And I'm in a very fortunate position, obviously, to access a number of different clubs. So we went to the driving range on a Monday morning at Four Golf to film our regular videos. I literally tried what is in my bag or a large majority of it just once and ended up putting them all in the bag with a mixed bag that you've never seen anything like and playing on that first tee in the competition on the Wednesday morning with no idea what was about to happen. Right, so the iron you've just watched me play in, well, I'll get to what exactly those are and how the strangest mix of irons that you'll ever see came to fruition. But we'll start off at the lower end of the bag, and it's the putter. We'll just see if we can start this morning off with, uh, with a birdie. No, that's rolled by. But the putter in question was one, again, that uh, I literally laid eyes on just a few days previous. It's a second-hand Scotty... Studio style Newport 1.5. It's effectively a blade putter. It's a second hand model. It came into four golf as a Partex. I seen it lay on the table about to go for sale. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this a, a try. I'd not been holding putts for quite some time. The blade putter style has never been one that again is recommended for me. I've always been a mallet style putter. There's plenty of toe hang in this thing. All the things that are supposedly maybe not right for me. But I played this putter, or a friend's putter, when I was away for a few days in Scotland a few weeks prior, with the same principle, trying out a different putter, trying something different, and I played really well with it. So I decided to give it a go. And do you know what? I didn't hold everything on the day in the competition that I refer to, but I rolled everything up. I felt confident with it. Pace was really good. I set it off on the lines I intended. And I was absolutely delighted that I managed to put this in the bag. And that was the first change and the first time I ever played with that out on the golf course was on that Wednesday morning in the competition. And the big deal was it wasn't about whether it suited me. It wasn't about the style of putter. It was all about confidence and what goes on between the ears. And kick round. Kick round. Ah, oh, that's not too bad. Right, the next in question was the wedges. And I put three of them in the bag, a 50, a 56, and a 60. I tested these again two days previous on the Monday at Four Golf and out here on the course at Wallasey. It was the only time I'd ever played with them. I can't even tell you right now what those wedges are because they're still under embargo for a few weeks. All I can say is they're possibly the best wedge I've ever tried you're going to love them when I finally get to show you them on October the 10th. But for now, you'll just have to trust me. These wedges are really special. They feel superb. They look superb. And they played really well again on the Wednesday. Right, so I hear what you're saying. And there is nothing particularly weird about this what's in the bag right now. You've got a few wedges and a putter in it. So what? Well, this is where it gets really weird, in my opinion. As you can see, there's two seven irons, two nine irons, and two five irons. And in itself, that's pretty damn weird. But then if you mix up the type of clubs they are, it gets even more strange in my opinion. Look at the thickness of the sole of these clubs and how they differ. Look at the profiles in them and how they differ. It's incredible mix of irons. And the question is, how did it work? Well, first of all, it worked incredibly well. I played really well on the day and uh, that's hence why we've then transferred this into this what's in the bag and the explanation. I've no idea how it worked, I've no idea why it worked, but it did. But the simple factor is they're all differently lofted, these clubs, and they blend quite nice actually. The loft gap between them all is effectively playing from pitching wedge being the 9 iron on the P7 MBs into the 9. 7 iron of the MB became my 8 iron, so on and so forth. You get the picture. We ran from pitching wedge up to a 5 iron being the PXG longest 5 iron in the bag. 
that's how the mix worked but it was a swapping in between of the two clubs that was the profile of the two clubs if you like so going to pick up a five iron uh, in the MB compared to the five iron of the PXT they were massively different but you know what it didn't matter one bit whatsoever I enjoyed it in the MB so much in the video that we'd done in the week previous that I just could not leave them out the bag but I only had the nine seven and five so it was a case of how can we make this work that's how I put it together we mixed up ended up having six irons in the bag like I said effectively from pitching wedge through to five iron in terms of loft gapping and when it mattered when a shot was required the club that I reached for or wanted to reach for in this case was the MB that's the one that I had the most confidence with that's the one that I was enjoying it in that last week or so leading up to the competition and for me it goes back to the thing I first said about the putter this is not about what you put in the bag or how or why or what's right for you or what's wrong for you it's all about what's between the ears and as golfers confidence is the biggest thing that we must carry around with us and without that you've got no chance of playing well kick on kick on there's my favorite wedges that i've now got to cover and not show you what they are but i'm loving them came up short there with that five iron from 180 use the p7 mb by the way but the question i've got for you is i said this is the weirdest what's in the bag and obviously i had the opportunity to change all these things round by having access to so many clubs but from your perspective what's the weirdest change you've made to your bag and did it have a positive or negative effect on your game the next up is driver it was the biggest change in the bag because i literally hit half a dozen balls with it yet again on that well i was gonna say fatal monday morning but it turned out to be really good monday morning i picked this driver up from uh, literally months previous i'd last tried it and it went really well in the in the range and it went incredibly well out there on in reality i'm just amazed at how this bag came together and do you know what none of these clubs let me down and that's pretty much what happened on the day <laughs> it's gone incredibly long and it's gone incredibly straight which are two things that uh, again i've been struggling with this is such a weird game i ended up with the callaway max ls the low spin version which if you go back to my original reviews i did really well with it was always a favorite again it's this thing about picking these clubs up when i go back to four golf and i keep always going back to certain clubs which always seem to perform well even when i'm struggling i can pick up certain clubs and again to me it's just all about confidence it's what's between the ears it was set up in a neutral position i've actually got a 60 gram shaft in it for those interested hazardous smoke it just performed really well and i've got to say on the day itself i hit one of the longest drives i can ever remember hitting i always found that the whole epic range this year was the longest that i tried it performed really well each of the models was definitely the longest that we tried in the testing and out there on the course it did incredibly well i'd use this like i said half a dozen times on that monday morning it went into the bag i felt confident I hit the first couple of tee shots off really well and you know what happens from then on in confidence builds it all gets a bit better and this weirdest what's in the bag continues and that was the driver that i ended up with right so the last three clubs in the bag were and i literally went for 14 clubs and you know me i'm a kind of 10 club carry bag kind of fella but i went for it 14 clubs and we ended up returning back to the bag the g425 range and part of the problem with me is with testing clubs every week i have them in the bag for several weeks on end for me to give you what i feel is a sort of more balanced opinion so things do dip in and out but when it come to it i realized that the best fairway woods that i tried this year were the g425 so into the bag went the three wood but i also put in the seven wood which i think has been an absolute a real weapon for any sort of average golfer we all should be carrying one it's so versatile in terms of how you can use it and then the last club in the bag and a lot of you will see it sort of uh, sneaking around the eagle eyed amongst you because it's got a fairly uh, distinctive crown it's from that pxg range of gem 4 and uh, it's the 0341 x for those of you interested five wood and again it's kind of almost similar to what i said about the uh, seven wood from the g425 
really versatile. It's got a sort of strong ball flight, but it's also, you can float it right up there. I play it in a number of positions. And again, I just ended up with a bag that was so different. Like I said, the weirdest bag in so many ways in the way it was put together. But in all honesty, it really, really worked, which was the bit that baffles me still to this day. It's the bag I've got out with me today, obviously. And I could really quite easily continue playing with it other than that it looks incredibly weird. That's me done. There's no more I can show you. It's, um, it's a video that came about because it was so weird. It's that simple. And, uh, I thought you might be interested to see A, how it was put together, B, how I got on with it. But see, the final bit is, like I said, all throughout this video, it just shows that no matter what clubs you've got in the bag, unless your mindset is right, then you're finished. There's no chance whatsoever. And confidence is key to playing good golf. Right, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you don't already. Hit that like button, share the video, do whatever you need to do. And the comments down below, what have you put in the bag, the weirdest thing you've ever put in? Did it work or was it a failure? I'll see you all soon.